And I've got all the jack PCBs removed from the back plane here so now I can get a better look at things. So this is the uh, mic input jack PCB with the XLR jacks. These are Neutrik jacks. I'm not sure I'm real happy with them. They do have a convention for um, strapping the shell to pin one. Uh, there are there are actually four conductors. We've got the three pins, the first one here, and then you've got another one behind this conductor right here, and then you've got your third one over here, and then this goes to the shell. On this jack PCB, the way that Soundtracks did it, and you can see that that pin is isolated. This is the ground trace and that pin is going to nothing. When these things were mounted up to the back plane to the chassis, um, I was having variable conductivity to ground and so that was just from this to the chassis depending on how the rivets went in and you know paint and this that and the other thing but I have confirmed that we've got a completely open circuit in between pin one and the shell of each of these jacks so um, but as an aside I'm not really impressed with this it's just asking for solder joint problems later on because the shell like any D type jack you know the shell mounts but you're every time you push an XLR cable into this it's going to be pushing on this housing and it's there's no rigid mounting in between the shell and the body the jack body and so I don't know so now as far as grounding on this as I suspected you've got you've got basically a perimeter ground trace so pin one of every jack is tied with pin one of every other jack in it two places at least two places I mean it can go all over the place so the question here is in order to isolate the jacks um, it probably would be beneficial then to just remove maybe this little one up here in between each one and then they would tie to a central right here so that's one idea at one point I was thinking you know maybe have each jack go to the chassis, bond it directly to the chassis, tie this fourth conductor over to the ground trace, isolate each one of these, and then make sure that the shell is bonded to the chassis, bear the paint and get a good Keps nut on there or something like that. But that's an awful lot of trouble. That would be a lot of modification of the jack PCB all for the sake of these things which I'm not really excited about. So the other alternative then is just to get new jacks that have solder cups in them and uh, forget the jack PCBs altogether and then bond each of those directly to the chassis. So that'd be another route but that'd be an expensive route. 
Uh, next up, this is the line input. This is a balanced circuit. Um, same thing, perimeter, ground trace. Things get a little complicated on this because, well, let's see, no, not on this one. We, we do have these LANs here for multi-pin connectors uh, on some of the other M-series models. There's a integrated patch bay, so that would, that would go to those. So we've got these zero ohm jumpers and those are simply tying our um, tying our conductors on our jacks over to the wires and then also allowing those to be carried over to these multi-pin connectors. So same thing, there's probably a decent way here although I've got to look at it closer um, but I think it's doable to to just break one of these traces maybe uh, maintain maintain this trace here and then break these the, the only wrinkle to that would be if I ever wanted to put these multi-pin connectors in for something. I can't imagine that I would, but those have to tie in. It would mean jumpering, running a, a jumper wire from up top here back to here. So that's just kind of off the top of my head. And then we've got the insert jack PCB it's the it's the same um, printed circuit board so there's just some differences in the zero ohm jumpers that are on there because this is an unbalanced insert tip tip ring um, shield standard but notice that those multi-pin connectors are in place on this although not used on this mixer they're they're in place but same you know same basic situation this is the oh, let's see wait a second yeah so we've got the shield here tied into this trace here if these all just ran down here and then if there was a, a wire soldered on here that went to the chassis and then you know this was broken here, and here, and here, and what, here, here, and then I'd have to, let's see, is that, yeah, see, because that comes all the way around there, so you'd have to do it there, sheesh, okay, and then the last one, this is the, uh, this is the direct out, now this, gets more complicated because notice that we do have um, specified components here not just zero ohm jumpers and the reason for that is the way that soundtracks did the direct out jacks it's uh, it's plus 4 dBU or minus 10 dBV depending on whether you've got a cable that um, your hot conductor in your cable, your signal conductor in your cable goes to the ring or to the tip. I think if I recall correctly tip is plus four, ring is minus ten. So depending on how you wire up your cables or I suppose conceivably um, you could probably put a TS jack in here, insert it all the way and get plus four, put it in halfway and get minus ten. But that's what these resistors are doing here. and. So